Welcome back to Natalie's Hoya Haven. I am Natalie. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming back. If this is your first time, thank you for choosing to watch my collection. Today I am going to show you all of my Rips Alice. So I've never done a video like this before. I, I have done a whole house tour video uh, pretty early on if you want to go back to my channel and watch that. Uh, you'll see what all I have and it's probably changed. I think I need to do a new tour. But anyways, um, we glossed over some of the Ripsalis I had at that time. And someone had actually asked me to make a Ripsalis video. So here I am. I decided to gather them all up. I have 10. And I thought it'd be kind of fun if we kind of just did them in order from least favorite to most favorite. And I didn't write out a scheduled list or anything. I'm just going to kind of glance over them and, and pick them out as I see them. I, I already know my least favorite and I already know my top one. So we're just going to kind of wing it on the ones in between. So anyway, the first uh, Rip Salis in my collection that at, at, for the time being is my least favorite. And I will grab him right now. This would be my Ripsalis Pentaterra. And now don't get me wrong, he has great potential. But, so when I did buy him, he had these scorch marks on him. However, he continued to grow just fine, so I just kind of left him as he was hoping eventually he'd grow big enough and I could just cut them up and maybe get rid of those burn marks. So that's what I've been attempting to do. I've had him for probably at least a year. Guess what? He really hasn't done a thing. He's still, still uh, looks pretty much the same. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to chop and prop him and just kind of start over. Maybe start over in a smaller pot, maybe even, even a different medium, but I need to do a little bit of investigative work on this one because I'm not really sure what he likes. But he gets the Pentaterra because if you can see, I don't know if you can see that real well or not, but he has five sides to him. And that's why he is Pentaterra. So if I can figure him out, he's definitely going to go up on the list. But for right now, he's not dying, but he's not done a thing since I bought him. So Ripsalis Pentaterra. All right, that's my number 10. Number nine, and I'm going to go with my other one that also is not doing well. And this is one that I want it to be my favorite. I trust me that I want nothing more for this one to be number one, but I got to figure them out first. And that is my Ripsalis Pilocarpa. I've got, I had one, now I have two because I had to propagate and we're trying them a couple different ways, but he, uh, and the reason why this one is different and I like it so much is because it's actually fuzzy. The, it's, it's a very fuzzy one. And I've seen huge ones of these and they're, they're awesome looking. But I had these two together in a bigger container. And I could just never really figure out when it needed watering. And, and I feel like I'd overwater it, but then like I'd wait and wait and wait. And then, like, it wouldn't drink the water. So, I, when I did dig into it, I didn't see anything that looked promising. I just started completely over again. This time, we're putting them in terracotta because I feel like if I can get him to dry out faster, that might be a good thing. Um, if I can figure him out, he's definitely going to move up. My, my wish is that he would be in a hanging basket at some point. And they do these little cute little berries. I, I've been told they're edible, but I don't know. 
this berry's been on here since I bought the plant. So, and the plant was very cheap. I only paid, I believe, $4.69 for it. They had bigger hanging baskets, and I forget the price of the baskets, but it wasn't that much smaller than what I had. So, and I've already lost some of this. Some pieces had just fell off, and I ended up throwing them away. So, that's my number nine plant, and that is Ripsalis pilocarpa. Oh. <laughs> All right, number eight. Let me decide which one's going to be number eight. I think this one right here, which is my Ripsalis clavata. I bought this at the same exact time I bought my Pilocarpa. And the thickness is about the same as a Pilocarpa, although you can see the difference here where the Pilocarpa has the little fuzzies. Uh, the, this Ripsalis, the Ripsalis clavata does not. And so this one would definitely be higher on my list if it had grown, but I haven't really seen any growth since I bought it. This was basically the size I bought it as. So if it wants to give me some growth, great. You're going to get to move up on the list, but this one I will not repot though, because it is very snug in there. It looks happy. It just doesn't want to grow. So as long as it's happy, I'm going to keep him where he's at. And I, I like him in this pot. This is a pot I got from TJ Maxx. Uh, if you've never went to TJ Maxx to shop for pots, I would suggest that. They have a lot of good ones. Only thing is make sure that it actually drains because sometimes they accidentally plug the hole that's inside the pot. And even though it looks like it should drain, it doesn't drain out. So. And he's actually, this one is actually, I'm just using it as a cover pot. It's actually in this. So, which I do with a lot of, a lot of plants anymore. It just makes it, makes it easier. So that is my number eight. And that is my Ripsalis clavata. All right. Number seven is going to be this one. This is Ripsalis, I hope I say this right, Huletiana. I will put the name down at the bottom. And I think he's starting to finally grow. I think that might be new. Um, but hasn't done much. Hasn't done much at all. So... He's firm in there, and again, he's in a cover pot. Uh, he is firmly rooted in there. He seems to drink the water I give him. He seems fine with once a week waterings. I just, just he's not growing. I don't know, not growing. So that's my number seven, Ripsalis Huletiana. All right, who's next? I'm going to say number six is this one. And I, but I do have to say I love it in this planter. And I'm going to have to pull it. Oh, I think I know it. I think it's cap cap Terrace capilliformis. Yes, I'm right. <laughs> this one is Ripsalis Terrace capilliformis. And this one this one has grown. <laughs> this one has done all of this. It's almost looking like pigtails on this. And this is one I just really enjoy having in a face planter because I think the more this grows, it's really going to look like she's got a crazy head of hair. So very easy growing has not given me a lick of trouble. As a matter of fact, I think this is the pot I bought it in, if I remember correctly. So very easy going. I must say most of my ripsalis are easy going. Um, the, the, the couple in the beginning, those are my heart, hardest ones. So, uh, but, but most of them, they just, you know, you water them once a week, you pull them away from the window to make sure they're not too close to a window. They will scorch. And all of these, I would say most of these, I think with the exception of one, are in my west facing window, but they're about eight, eight 
be pulled away from that window. So, so, so this is number six, Ripsalis terrace capilloformis. Oh, and another thing about Ripsalis that I really like, they're not that expensive. Like, uh, so a lot of these I bought, I bought some at Hohen's greenhouse that were, they were all like $4 and 69 cents. And then last year when I went to, um, uh, Ah, what's the name of it? Ah. I'll put the name down below. <laughs> I'm I'm having morning fog. Excuse me. But uh, so, oh, Groovy Plant Ranch. That's the name, Groovy Plant Ranch. When I went there last year, they have a huge selection of Ripsalis. And um, I think a lot of them in this size pot, we're probably like $7.99, I want to say. They had some bigger hanging baskets. I I do have one big hanging basket of Rips Alice, and I believe I paid $19.99 for that. But it was a nice, nice uh, basket. And these are Rips Alice that you can't find just anywhere. You know, Hohen's, Hohen's has a good selection. Groovy Plant Rants had a much bigger selection, so... So little side note, they're not too expensive. They're not like Hoyas. <laughs> All right, that's my number six. Let's go on here. When I see, okay. Number five. I'm gonna say number five is this one. Number five is my Ripsalis Micrantha. This one I did have to repot. I had him in a bigger pot and he wasn't doing real well. And so I took him out and I put him into this smaller pot. This is my entire plant. I had it in a pot about twice that size. And, um, you know, trim the roots up. Just It just didn't look fantastic. But since I've repotted it, we're getting all kinds of new growth. And they come in very very thin and kind of stringy almost but then they thicken up so here's one that's a little bit thicker so um this one's doing really well now and so i'm liking him i think at some point i do want to put him in a bigger pot but that's not going to happen for a while because if he's doing good right now i'm not going to uh upset the apple cart i guess you would say i'm going to let him just do his thing but this is my number five, Ripsalis micrantha. And that's what it looks like up close. It's flat, but it has these little rounded things. So it's really cool, really cool plant. All right, that was my number five. Number four, let me see. Number four is going to be this one. <clears throat> And this, I gotta look this one up. Oh yeah, this is my Ripsalis rambulosa. And I'm telling you, I, I've i seen these as hanging baskets. They are so cool. I want this plant as a hanging basket. Why is he number four and not number one? Eh, he's not growing real fast. <clears throat> he is rooted in there. He's He's pretty happy. You know, the once a week watering. Other than that, I basically leave him alone. It does have a little bit of browning on the tips there. And and he's got a little bit of new growth, as you can see right there. Um, just kind of waiting for him to do a little more, you know. Very flat. It's got a rubbery texture to it, almost like a, um, you know, a type of succulent, you know. Um, and I love the way when, when they get real big, they kind of like curve in and they kind of just do like a little scoop thingy, which I really like. So that's my number four. That is my Ripsalis Rambulosa. All right. Number three. <clears throat> and this one's been on other videos. I have shown this one before. <laughs> This is my Ripsalis salicornoides. Salicorn, yeah, I said it the first right, right the first time. Salicornoides. So this, this guy was about like 
just that when I first bought him, about this tall. And he did all of this. And guess what? He has got new growth coming in. You can see how it comes in like a lighter green. And he's awesome. He's, he's actually fun to touch. So he's fun to just play with. Uh, his common name that he might be known by is Dancing Bones. And you can kind of tell. They have, he, he, he grows in segments. And all the segments seem to be about the same size. And they look like, they look like bones. And of course, you know, I play with it by shaking it too. This is Dancing Bones. So this one... My hope is eventually it'll grow long enough and droop over and it'll be like hanging. So, but for now I'm having fun with it. I keep having to find new places to put it though because it keeps touching the top of wherever I put it. So number three on my list, Ripsalis salicornoides, also known as Dancing Bones. All right, we got two left. And actually, I don't know, maybe my, maybe my dancing bones should have been number two, but, but I really like these last two. So let me get these out of your way. I don't want to distract. Okay, let's see here. Two left. So this is number two. And this is Ripsalis oblonga. Oblonga. Ripsalis oblonga. Why am I saying it wrong? I think it's uh, it's like oblong. Uh. So Ripsalis oblonga. Okay. Anyways. Oh. So. Little cute little story about this one. So I bought this at Benzel's greenhouse, and. Oh, this one's really wet. Hmm. So I bought this at Benzel's Greenhouse, and it did not have a name when I got home. I It had a name. So like what they do at this greenhouse is they'll put a name, they'll put a sign, and then they'll put all the plants out, but not each individual plant has a name with it. So when I bought it, I didn't take a picture of the sign. I bought it. I got it home. Then I couldn't figure out what kind of Ripsalis it was. I did my, a lot of searching on the internet and, you know, a lot of them looked the same. <laughs> so I ended up going back to that greenhouse and she still had plants of these available. However, the sign was gone. So I had to ask. And she actually had to go back into her shop and look it up and bring it back out. But she did give me the name, and it's Ripsalis oblonga. So hers were being exposed to more sunlight than mine were. And hers were getting very, very red. The, the tips would come in red. The new growth would come in red. And it was very pretty. Um, it would even be outlined in red. I think you can kind of see some of that here. But, well, I'm trying, people. Anyways, so I brought it home and I put it in a higher light situation because I, want it, I wanted it to look like hers looked like. And it's, it seems to be doing good. It's stuck in there real good. It's got new growth. But I am a little concerned that I have not watered this in a week. And it's wet. I mean, look at this. It still has water in it. It's like soaked down here. So I'm definitely not going to water it today. I might just keep an eye on it and see if it dries out. If not, I may have to check the roots and repot. So, But this is my number two plant. I, I just love it. I love the way it dangles. I love the way it grows. I love the redness that comes out on it. So that's number two, Ripsalis oblonga. Okay, drum roll. Here comes the last one. <laughs> and this one, you might not see my face when I put it in the picture because it's pretty large. But here we go. 
This is my Ripsalis Vergata. <laughs> so here, it goes all the way up like this. Maybe I can stand back and show you a distance picture. So it is all the way like that, all the way like this, all the way up here like this. Yeah. She's a big girl. So, and what I haven't told you is I've cut many cuttings off of this. This would even be a bigger plant. This is the one I did get at the Groovy Plant Ranch. It was $19.99. This is my most expensive ripsalis that I have. So I've, I've cut probably about this much off. <laughs> probably like about this much and gave it to my girlfriend and repotted that up. I also cut a bunch of smaller pieces up and I had sold those. So this is what I got left. I'm kind of thinking right now I don't want to cut on it anymore because I want to see how crazy I can get it to look. But but she's my number one and her her new growth comes in real bright and pretty green and still in the same pot that I bought her in. And she is happy. And I got to watch because I'm about ready to knock other stuff over with this thing. Oh, see? <laughs> this is my Ripsalis Vergata. Isn't she pretty? So, okay. <laughs> Let's get her out of here. That is my Ripsalis collection. All 10 plants for in order from... Least liked to most liked, although I will say I do really truly like all of them. I just, some of mine have opportunities to do better, and that's on me. I need to find the time to give them those opportunities. So I hope you liked my video today. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will be so happy and thankful if you do. I will try to respond to anybody who has any comments or suggestions. Or let me know what your favorite Rip Salis is. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.